Welcome to Breaking Down Bergman and the discussion that we wanted to have on Bergman's early TV movies. Now you might have noticed that at this point we've missed a few of them. Mr. Sleeman is coming, The Venetian, and Rabies to name three of them. And we wanted to discuss why they're missing from the list because when we first started we pledged to watch every single Bergman film in order and discuss them. We sure did, and we have every intention to do so still. Unfortunately, these films are not at all available. And when we say not at all available, we mean there is, in some cases, very little evidence that they exist. A few still pictures, a brief write-up, but as far as we know, the movies are sitting in a vault. And they're owned by SVT, which is a national broadcaster in Sweden, and they want a lot of money to get them out of the vault and into people's hands. Money, which we don't have. No. <laughs> and when we're talking about money, we're talking about, this is what they told me in, uh, in an email, a licensing fee of 2,000 euros, that's worldwide, it translates to about $2,460 Canadian. On top of that, there is an overall work fee charge of about 100 euros. That translates to about $120 Canadian. And then there is a per half hour charge of 190 euros, which converts to assuming that each film is about 90 minutes, which I think we can agree on is about the runtime of a Bergman film on average. Um, that translates to $700. So for each film, there is a very rough grand total of $3,280. To start. Isn't art supposed to be priceless? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get, we have to admit, we were a little bit peeved about this because yeah. really you'd think as a director like Ingmar Bergman that a lot of his films would be available and you know key films like this which maybe don't have a lot of commercial value but they're, they've been around, they exist, they've been preserved as far mm -hmm. as we know and they're not available. So that begs the question since we're missing these films, is our analysis and our project, which is to see his development and his career progress retrospectively, is that at risk then? Is it jeopardized? It's, it's been difficult for me to come up with an answer to this because I think there were some points when some of those films, Mr. Sleeman is coming in particular, uh, were released onto television and there seemed to be this sort of hole in what we were seeing, the growth from Bergman. And mm -hmm. I mean, I can't really pinpoint it because I haven't seen the movie and we can't talk about it in that particular way. But as we talked about with Brink of Life, we mm -hmm. started to see some stylistic shifts in what he was doing. And it happened to be around the time that a lot of those TV movies were made. So we can only sort of assume. On the other hand, though, there are other works of his that we are not considering for this project. So he did radio plays. He staged many, many dramas on stage, and we're not looking at any of that. So, you know, in terms of him developing as an artist, I'm sure all of those efforts made a contribution to his vision and the way that he positioned things and how he interacted with his actors. And this is where I get stuck because, you know, we, we ourselves in the modern day couldn't go to see a Bergman play with the cast that he intended in the theater that he wanted mm -hmm. but there are certain things that are available to us and some of those radio productions are mm -hmm. um, and we've sampled a few but to really go beyond the moving image that is Bergman um, framed on on a big screen or on a television um, it's it's sort of a bigger beast but what we intended to do was watch the filmmaker Bergman mm -hmm. and I think that the films include his television work. Now, in this day and age, the options are plentiful. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of thing that would be perfect for SVT to have on their website, right? Mm -hmm. You could sell these for a small fee because you're not pay you, you've already restored it as far as I know. You're not paying um, for you know the, the uh, production of it in terms of a physical media. Mm -hmm. You can download it online. It's, you know, low overhead costs, but mm -hmm. a potential big award for someone uh, when it comes to Bergman's status. People are curious, I would imagine, at least we are, you know, we'd have two sales. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say something controversial and David might yell at me, but to be honest, I'm not that broken hearted about missing these. You're not curious at all? Well, I'll say this. 
I was really curious to see this can't happen here because of all the hoopla and the fuss about it. And then when we did see it, it was so... Blase. Nah. Yeah. So, you know, these three films being hidden away somewhere, I don't really think that it's going to cause that much of a speed bump for us. I guess the other question is how many more would you be settled with missing? You know what I mean? What if we run into... What's the magic number? Yeah. You know, I'll, tell, I'll say this. I don't think there is a magic number. However, if they were all in a row, so for example, we had five years gone as opposed to five films spread out across the entire filmography, then I might be more concerned. Because then we're talking, because we're talking about a director and a filmmaker who really translates a lot of himself into his films. Mm -hmm. And if we're, we have a large time gap where films were produced that represent that time, and they're all gone, then that's, that would be problematic to me. I guess it's just the modern film enthusiast that really wants to see these. There's so much discussion about film preservation these mm -hmm. days, and I'm, I'm not saying that they're not taking care of these films because I really don't know, and we're assuming that they are, I think, to be fair. But part of film preservation is making the films available to the public. And I mean, there's a Bergman week every year. There's constant celebrations. There's constant screenings of his films around the world. Why can't we get access to these? Why is SBT locking them up? And why can't we send them an email and get an answer that we can fully comprehend and seems reasonable? It just kind of peeves me. I No, I get that. I think considering how uncomplicated it probably is to just produce them digitally at this point, it, it shouldn't be shouldn't be that much of a big deal. I guess I always think of it, maybe this is a stereotype, Sweden as a place that is rich in culture. And I know that Bergman is one of their prized assets. That's true, he is a major export. I guess from a heritage perspective, they should make more of an effort to create kind of a Bergman canon in a way um, that's more complete than just you know the award-winning films. And I think that gives the opportunity for viewers to weigh in on this as well. Whether any of you have actually seen these films, because I know they've been out there in the past, um, what did you think? And are they worth pursuing, I guess, in, in, when they're so hard to get a hold of? And if you haven't seen the films, would you even be interested in seeing them? And do you think it's worth it for SVT to release them? Um, I'd be curious to hear people's thoughts on both sides. Also, let us know if you have hookups over there, and maybe you can get a hold of a copy that we can watch. Yeah, we'd love to check them out. Or SVT, <laughs> if you change your mind and want to lower your price a little bit, um, we'll negotiate. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but uh, join us next time when we delve into another one of Bergman's films here on Breaking Down Bergman. See you then.